dynasty is dead. The Miami Dolphins' 22-12 win over the New England Patriots ensured that Bill Belichick and his team won't finish the 2020 season with a winning record, which will be the first time that has happened since the 2000 season, his first year in New England. The following, 20 things we learned in the Miami Dolphins' 22-12 win over the New England Patriots. Brian Flores gets his first winning season. It's been a long and sometimes painful two past decades, but Sunday's win over the Patriots shows that the massive rebuild of this once proud franchise is undergoing is on track. The Dolphins 9-5 have produced Flores' first winning season and remain in the mix to earn one of the AFC's three wild card playoff spots if they keep winning. This Saturday night's game against the Las Vegas Raiders 7-7 is a must-win for the Dolphins because Cleveland playing the Giants Sunday night and Baltimore 9-5 appear to be in the driver's seat for two of the three wild card spots. Xavier Howard, Xavier Howard should be defensive player of the year front runner. Howard didn't pull down his 10th interception of the season against the Patriots, but he did force a third-quarter fumble that helped change the tide of the game when he dislodged a Jacoby Myers reception that Alandon Roberts recovered. That's 10 turnovers Howard has forced this season, accompanying his 9 interceptions. Those types of game-changing plays should help him edge Rams defensive lineman Aaron Donald for the honor of the NFL's top defensive player if the Dolphins make it to the postseason. Dolphins doubled season's rushing average versus Pats. The Dolphins have struggled to find a rushing identity all season, but it appears they found one using the RPO to carve up New England's defensive front, which came into Sunday's game allowing 124 rushing yards per game. The Dolphins, who had averaged 95.2 rushing yards per game, doubled up on that by producing a season-high 250 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns, two of which were scored by QB Tuat Vailoa on goal-line runs. Cam Newton's arm is dead. Everyone knows Newton, the Patriots' starting quarterback, is a threat running the football. But Sunday's game, and this entire season, showed that the former Auburn standout, Heisman Trophy winner and NFL MVP is no longer a threat throwing the ball. Virtually half of Newton's passes against the Dolphins were either short, long or just off the mark, and it encouraged the Dolphins to crowd the box, trying to force Newton into the throwing downfield. Newton completed 17 of 27 passes for 202 yards but didn't throw any touchdowns. No Jasicki, no problem. The Dolphins were forced to play the Patriots without Mike Jasicki, the team's top touchdown producer and second most productive receiver this season, and the tight end duo of Adam Shaheen pictured and Durham Smythe played well. They did their best to compensate for the loss of Miami's flex weapon who was sidelined by the shoulder injury he suffered in last week's loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. Smythe caught a career-high five receptions for 50 yards and Shaheen caught one of the two passes thrown his way, contributing 15 yards. Lynn Bowden Jr.'s role in Miami's offense should grow. Bowden Jr., a rookie the Dolphins traded a 2021 fourth-round pick to the Raiders to acquire the week before the season started, is blossoming into a dangerous playmaker for Miami's offense. Bowden, whose role has been elevated because of Devontae Parker and Jakeem Grant's injuries, has a knack or making defenders miss. That was on display on a nine-yard run, where Bowden reserved field Patriots defenders miss. Even if Parker and Grant return from their injuries the Dolphins need to continue to feed Bowden, who finished the game with six catches for 37 yards. Salvin Ahmed makes his best pitch for starting job. In his return from the shoulder injury that sidelined him three games, the rookie from Washington became the 12th rookie in franchise history to rush for more than 100 yards in his first season. Ahmed, who finished the game with a career-high 122 yards and a touchdown on 23 carries, and also caught one pass for five yards and scored on a two-point conversion, is making a strong argument that he should be Miami's featured back when Miles Gaskin comes back from the COVID-19 reserve list. Michael Deiter has respectable outing. The left knee injury Solomon Kinley injured in fourth quarter and the ankle injury that kept Eric Flowers sidelined for the second straight game forced the Dolphins to lean on Deiter for the final quarter of the game, and the 2019 third-round pick who started 15 games at left guard his 15 games at left guard his rookie season held his own. It's a good sign that Miami didn't have much drop-off with Deiter on the field because that means he's a salvageable draft pick who simply needs more time to develop. Colts are Miami's top wild-card competition. 
The Colts' 27-20 win over the Houston Texans keeps them in the AFC's wildcard mix, but it does help boost Miami's draft standing considering the Dolphins' own Houston's 2021 first and second round picks. The Dolphins are going to need help from Pittsburgh and Jacksonville if they want to edge the Colts for the final wildcard spot. Dolphins' defense holds the line. Ignore the Patriots' 5.3 yards per carry average. The Dolphins did admirable job stopping Patriots' rushing attack, holding New England to 117 rushing yards on 22 attempts, which is shy of their season average. While Sony Michel gained 74 yards on 10 carries, nobody else on New England's roster carved the Dolphins up, and that included Cam, who gained 38 rushing yards on 9 carries. Alandon Roberts finished the game with a team-high 9 tackles and was a major factor in Miami's bend, but don't break approach against the Patriots. For his 8-game streak of games of not being shut out in the sack column, the Nigerian standout defensive end hadn't pulled down the quarterback in four games. Then, on the Patriots' final play of the game, Ogba hauled down Cam Newton with 108 left. The sack tied Ogba with Danny Stubbs 1996 with the most sacks for a Dolphins first-year player. While his sack numbers have slowed, Ogba has made solid defensive plays, such as peeling off his pass rush on the Pats' first possession and busting up a receiver screen to Damier Bird, as the play went for minus two yards. How could the Grugier Hill flag on Hawks pass happen after the Cincy fiasco? Okay, the pom-poms have, deservedly, been out for Dolphins special teams coach Danny Crossman for much of the season, but the Grugier Hill failure to report is eligible, negating a beautiful cross-field pass to Grugier Hill for a first down at the Patriots' 30 on a 4th and 7 with 7.46 left in the third quarter and Miami up 7-6. This debacle comes on the heels of a Hawk touchdown pass being wiped off the board against Cincinnati when Christian Wilkins previously failed to report. How could this ever happen a second time? Hard to find a remotely legitimate excuse. The Dolphins' point differential is in rarefied air for the franchise. With the plus 10 points margin in Sunday's game, the Dolphins jacked their season differential to plus 95 points. The last time a Dolphins team had at least that differential for a season was in 1985, plus 108. However, with the 2020 average extrapolated over the next two weeks, the Dolphins would finish with plus 109. The most recent instance of the Dolphins being at plus 109. The 1984 Super Bowl year and its awesome 215-point advantage 13.4 points per game average. The ist highest differential in team history, though there have been two seasons with an average advantage greater than 1984's. In the perfect season, the Dolphins. In the perfect season, the Dolphins outscored opponents by 214 points in the 14-game season, 15.3 point average margin, and in 1973 with 193 more points, 13.8. Maybe Buffalo resting players in the finale does have validity. Home road splits this year when it is mentioned that Buffalo might sit there walking wounded in their regular season finale against the Dolphins, the natural inclination is to side eye and shake one's head. No way, right. Even with the number two seed not providing that team a bye week this year, the Bills would surely still want to have the Steelers come to Orchard Park as opposed to vice versa in an AFC semifinal matchup. I mean, it isn't like it would be some major weather difference like the Bills having to play in Miami, or the Dolphins endure lake effect snow as the possible huge climate differences which of themselves are a huge home field advantage for the Northern team at stake. So, what are the NFL home and road splits this year? Heading in, with 222 of the season's 256 games played, 86.7%, home teams had won only 49.8% of their games. By comparison, the home team won 51.6% of the games in 2019. As long as Kansas City doesn't stumble and let the bye week be possible for the Bills, the notion is, interesting. Stand was a study in halftime adjustments. Against the Bengals, Chiefs and Patriots, the Dolphins averaged 5.3 points per first half, but blew the doors off in the second 30 minutes, putting up 17.3 points during the trio. The Dolphins had come in averaging 15.0 points in their first halves in the previous 11 games and then 8.9 after the break. Don Shula would be proud of the boys in Aqua. The NFL's winningest coach, who died in May, had occasionally called the New England coach, Belly Cheat, based on various reports of the Patriots videotaping opponents' practices or deflating balls to cater to Tom Brady's desires. 
Belichick remained frozen at 310 career wins, 37 behind Shula. Belichick turned 69 in April. Shula's final game in 1995, interestingly, the most recent playoff win for the Bills. The Dolphins keep their turnover machine oiled. With a Landon Roberts recovery of the fumble forced by Xavier headed their streak of games with at least one takeaway to 20 games. They are too short of the franchise's third longest streak. They also had an even turnover ratio versus the Pats on Sunday, keeping them at an impressive plus 10 for the season. The last time the Dolphins finished with a double digits advantage was in their division winning season of 2008. 2020 Hindsight, Dolphins Past Draft Gold 2010. Of all the defensive players selected by the Dolphins in their 55 drafts since 1966 and to have ever played in a regular season game for the Aqua and Orange, only safety Rashad Jones has had a multi-pro bowl career after having his name called as late as his 163rd in 2010. Linebacker Zach Thomas and his five pro bowls. He went nine slots ahead of Jones in 1996. Super Bowl MVP and also five-time Pro Bowl honoree Jake Scott. The safety was snapped up at number 159. Now, future four-time first-team All- Now, future four-time first-team All-Pro Gary Fenzik was picked way down at number 281 in 1976, but he never suited up in a regular season game for Miami after sustaining a preseason lung injury. After being released, Chicago snapped him up, and he became an integral figure in the team's 1985 Super Bowl title run. Among defenders who went undrafted and spent their rookie season in Miami, the gold standard is Cameron Wake, with his 98 sacks and five Pro Bowls. 2020 Hindsight, Dolphins past draft Pyrite 2005. Nick Saban was the freshly minted coach, hot off his winning a national title with LSU, so when he selected Auburn's solid if not spectacular running back Ronnie Brown with the second pick in the draft, fans were left to assuage their pessimism with the belief that the former SEC coach had seen Brown up close and personal and that he knew his ability better than most anyone else. Brown certainly had great moments in Miami, headed by Hellcat decimation of Bill Belichick and the Patriots in Massachusetts. But he settled into being an unremarkable runner, though he did have the best career, more than 7,000 total yards with 40 touchdowns of any running back selected in the first two rounds in 2005. Everyone talks about how picking Dante Culpepper in free agency to be the quarterback cost the team Drew Brees. But as stomach-turning is that the Dolphins became second of 21 franchises to leave Aaron Rodgers on the board in that draft, and 16 seasons later, both are still playing. Among running backs, um future Hall of Famer Frank Gore wasn't selected until the third round. On deck, at Las Vegas Raiders, Allegiant Stadium. Any realistic chance of a Dolphins playoff appearance requires a win in Sin City against the fading Raiders, who could be starting Marcus Mariota. Mariota and Dolphins rookie quarterback Tua Tungavailoa each attended St. Louis High School in Honolulu and then was picked in the top five selections of his respect. Ellipsis. The Dolphins were 4-2 against John Gruden during his stints with Oakland and Tampa Bay.